So rolling idiom, rolling idiom. So Batman Forever, Batman Forever. So New Direction and so forth. There's a little tidbit here. Michael Keaton was supposed to be Batman in Batman Forever. He was he was actually so, so supposed to be in the role, but um. Um, when Michael Keaton read the script, it was like, notes in Boston, this script, I'm out. <laughs> so he was out and Val Kilmer came in and a little tidbit as well. Val Kilmer filmed this film at the same time as he was filming Heat. So much so that he, he would finish a day with Heat and just go over and film Obama and Forever. So he was literally filming both films at the same time. Um, and obviously Heat was the much better film. Well, this was in 1995. So look, Joel Schumacher came in. I think George Michael was like, look, because you have to remember that Tim Burton was supposed to do the third film, but Bama Returns was so frightening and scared the bejesus out of Kate that Warner said, Joe, if you're coming in, you've got to make this thing lighter because Tim went way too dark. So George Michael, okay, fine, I'll go lighter. So this was a lot more colorful, a lot lighter. And I think what you saw was obviously the introduction of... Um, I almost forgot. Was I think? Yeah, I think Robin was was was, was in this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robin. Yeah, Robin was in this film. Yeah, Robin was in this film. Yeah. So this was obviously you had the introduction of Robin, um, and obviously this was Kim Robin, and um, you know, you know, I, I I'm still not sure whether Robin is because it was Chris O'Donnell. I don't. I'm still not sure whether Robin was in this film or in Batman and Robin. I think it was Batman and Robin. So I think, no, so yeah, no, I think, yeah, I think he was in Batman. Because I've not watched this movie in ages. So I think he must have been in Batman and Robin. So this Batman Forever, I think, again, you had two villains. So this is the first time you had two villains. Because remember, Batman Returns, Catwoman was neither villain nor no hero. But here you generally had two villains in Two Face and Riddler. And you could see how. From a tonal point of view, it was completely different. Way more jokes, way lighter, a lot more aloof. And I think it's, especially when you're now bringing in Jim Carrey, it's played into Jim Carrey's madness and so forth. And he just saw someone in the Jones trying to keep up with how crazy Jim, Jim Carrey's Red Riddler was. See, for me, his thing about Batman Forever is there is a deleted scene. In Batman Forever, that's actually an amazing scene where... Um, you just see Bruce sort of like think about, you know, his his, his past with his parents and everything. And he actually sees an actual bat. Go on to YouTube and look at that, um, that thing and I'm like, bro, if... Because remember, see people say Joel Schumacher, this dude and everything. Joel Schumacher is a guy who directed Lost Boys. I think he did, I think he did Flatliners. Yeah, he did Flat Flatliners and he, and he did... Um, what other thing did he do? Falling Down with Michael Douglas. He's a really good filmmaker, but I think he just chose to go this way with um, Batman Forever, man. And yeah, look, it was a super colorful film. Like, super, super colorful and everything. No, I do believe that Robin was in this film. I really think that Robin was in this film. I'm pretty sure he was in this film. But yeah, so, because I remember the way he, he meets this hockey gang and he's with the hockey gang. Like, I don't know. <laughs> film was well. But here's the thing about Batman Forever. It is a guilty pleasure. It is worse than the first two films it's definitely went downhill but when it's on i'm like i know this film isn't great but jim carrey is so crazy Tommy jones is so crazy um the world is so it's so mad and it so doesn't take itself so seriously that i'm like okay it's it's fine i guess i mean val kilmer wasn't the greatest batman i thought so he was just sort of there he didn't really sort of stamp his authority on his on, on, on so far. I mean, he wasn't bad, but he was just sort of, yeah, he was okay, you know. So, I mean, how do I... I mean, all I can say about Batman Forever, it's just a guilty pleasure. And I just think that... Because we'll get to Batman and Robin afterwards, which is where things just went way left. I would have loved to see Joe Schumacher keep the dark tone but in his own way. But what I do feel happened was Warner Bros. actually put pressure on Joe Schumacher to lighten up because Batman Returns was so dark and was so gr grotesque, you know, that I think Joe Schumacher was, okay, we are really, which is why Keaton viewed this script and was like, bro, this is such a departure from what we built in the first two films. I can't carry on with this. And I just think that, and also I think, you have, bro, you also had nipples. <laughs> 
on the suit as well. So yeah, the, the freaking name was on the suit. So I think um, it's. I mean, but I'm for. I mean, it's 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 not. A, it's not a bad film. We'll get to the bad. Trust me, there are. There, <laughs> When I will tell you when the film's about, this is not a bad film. This is not a great film. But I think what you have here is it's one of those films where it's like it's it's enjoyable. It's fun. It's a, it's you can't watch this and not have fun. Because the fight scenes are colorful, they are exuberant, and so forth. Tommy Lee, Lee Jones goes crazy and insane and Jim Carrey. <laughs> you see, I think Tom Lee Jones was trying to keep up with Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey in this film is insane. Bro, this dude is freaking insane. I mean, because this is just where this was this is this is Jim Jim Carrey at his optimum. Remember, this is 95. This was this was peak Jim Carrey. This was Ace Ventura Lai Lai Jim Carrey. And he just went insane in this. So and I think it definitely feels as if George Manka just said, bro, because a lot of those lines had to be improvised. They have to be, 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 be freaking improvised. Um, but there, I do feel there could have been another version of it. And, and here's, here's my thing as well. The whole civilian thing is a bad idea. Because Two-Face and Rilla, they're such great villains and such great characters. Having them both as one cancels each other out and it's a waste. You know, Two-Face, in and of himself, that's an amazing character. And Riddler, in and of himself, that's an amazing, that's an amazing character. The, the, the Riddler as well. So those are two really quality characters. That I just think that it's a waste you just using them like this, man. So, um, from yeah, for me, I just feel like if Joe Joe Schumacher had a particular vision that was lighter and yeah, I mean it's 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 because because say if you come away with that film. The the thing you remember the most about that film is Jim Carrey. Tommy Lee Jones, you can't out wacky Jim Carrey. And I think that that was what Tommy Lee Jones was doing, but it seemed as if Jim Carrey was like, I am the wacky guy, and you're just supplementary to me to be the wacky guy. So when Jim Carrey really sprang through, they didn't... Okay, I suppose they were trying to do things with Batman and the psychologist played by um, Nicole Kidman and, and, and so forth. Yeah, it was there, but for me, it didn't. It was not as interesting a dynamic as Vicky Vale and v Vicky Vale in the first film, and with Selena Kyle in the in the second film. Look, for me, the best thing to come on Obama Forever is Seals, Kids from From Rose, da 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 na 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 na. That and Jim 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 Carrey. But look, what I would say, it's a guilty pleasure. If Batman Forever is on TV on screen, I'll watch and I'll finish it, and I'll be like. Because I will laugh at Jim Carrey. I will find Tommy Lee Jones completely ridiculous. And with regards to... The, it's even like, yeah, because you, it's, it just washes over you. Like, the first Batman film and Returns, it really sort of affects me on an emotional level because there is so much detail given to it on a psychological level. Batman Forever is like, hey, yeah, you, know, you just watch over it, it's fun, you laugh, you, know, you see all those things, and it's, hey, it's, it's, it's cool. So it doesn't really stay with you in your mind, but it's that. So yeah, man, Batman Forever, man. Um, but... I still say that if Joel Schumacher had made a more serious film in the vein of his Fallen Down or Lost Boys, I think you could have had a very, very, very interesting Batman film, even with Val Kilmer.